Hello and welcome to episode 87 of Tall Guy Talks Travel with Rick Doherty. Of course, I am your host, Rick Doherty. We have so much happening on the show today. Marissa from Chicago had so many opinions on the Walt Disney World announcements made at the D23 Expo earlier this month that she will be here for the third straight week to discuss them. We will focus on some of the blue sky concept art surrounding Magic Kingdom and Disney's Animal Kingdom. Starting next week, Sarah says we'll be dissecting the D23 Expo announcements that have to do with the Disneyland Resort in Southern California. Today, however, she will be talking about that brand new Disney video game, Dreamlight Valley. Before we get to all that, just a reminder that we are about to enter the final month of my fundraiser for CASA of Pinellas County, Florida. Back in June, I walked across Ireland on a pilgrimage on the National Famine Way. This was something I had always wanted to do to raise money and awareness in the fight against domestic violence. I want to apologize that we did not do the greatest job of organizing this fundraiser. Organizations that pledged assistance did not come through as promised. I trusted people and they took advantage of that trust. Still, so many of you have showed up to make donations. Some of those donations are small, but we're trying to have them add up to something big. We haven't been perfect in this quest, but don't hold that against the survivors who are currently being helped by CASA. I promise you, the next time we do something like this, and there will be a next time, we will be ready to make an even bigger difference. Right now, please donate $20 to CASA of Pinellas County at casapinellas.org slash walkwithrick slash That's C-A-S-A-P-I-N-E-L-L-A-S dot org slash walkwithrick slash. Let's show that a community of small donors can outshine organizations that promise support but don't live up to their word. You can also see another brand new vlog from the trail in Ireland debuting this Monday on the Tall Guy Talks Travel with Rick Doherty YouTube page. Make sure to subscribe to see all of the videos from Ireland's National Famine Way. The first one went live on August 1st, and I'm putting up a new one every Monday until the final day of the fundraiser on Monday, October 31st. Since October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, that will be the final day of our push to raise money. The YouTube page is also the place to find a lot of great stuff from the parks. We've had dining reviews from Steakhouse 71, Tiffin's, Nomad Lounge, and more. There are vlogs from the parks, including the day I took the plunge on the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror for the first time because enough of you donated to CASA. Make sure to get subscribed. Now let's welcome Sarah Says to talk about some video games. Thanks for being here, Sarah. Yeah, I'm happy to be back. So you're playing this new game, Dreamlight Valley. Your husband got it for you for your birthday. Let's hope it's not the only birthday present that he got you. But (laughs) anyway, so tell us all about this game. You really seem to be loving it. Oh, man, I'm not just playing it. I'm like obsessed with (laughs) this game. So it is so fun. It's for those of you that play video games, it's very similar to Animal Crossing, which as a lot of people know, Animal Crossing became the big thing on like the Switch at the beginning of COVID. And it's your farming and you're taking care of your little village and you're creating all this stuff. So it's very similar to that with some other elements of other video games that actually have a cohesive storyline. But it's Disney related, correct? Yes. So that's the best part of it is so you are dropped into this valley called Dreamlight Valley. And as you get there, there's something called the forgetting that has taken over. And it's these big gnarly looking vines with like, it looks like all the vines and stuff outside of the castle when Maleficent takes over in Sleeping Beauty. And so you're brought there and you have magic and you're trying to help save all these Disney characters. So it kicks off kind of with like Mickey and Scrooge McDuck, Remy from Ratatouille's in there at the beginning. There's, who else is in there? Um, Goofy. At one point you can get Donald. You're trying to save Minnie. So basically it's all these characters, not just Disney, but also Disney Pixar. So at some point, 
they're teasing, you know, we're going to get Buzz Lightyear. We're going to get Woody. We're at one, you can do a quest where you can get Wally. I just did one that I just saved Kristoff from Frozen. <laughs> so it's everybody, everybody's encompassed in this game and you're trying to help them bring their valley back. Oh, and Ursula, I just had to free Ursula. That was not a shining moment in my life, but <laughs> you have to, to make the game progress. <laughs> So I'm not a big video game person, but I downloaded the one for your phone, Mirrorverse. Have you played that one yet? I have not, but I've heard, I've seen the preview stuff for it and I've heard great things about it. My phone's getting a little old, so it runs things a little funky sometimes. So I have not done Mirrorverse. Do you like that one? So I've played it. I don't know what I'm doing at all, but I'm fairly good, I guess. I don't know. Once I got Mulan, I got super excited to get Mulan. <laughs> I think I have to get really, really good to get Merida. I think she's like the last character that you can get as you keep stepping up here and you get okay. to pick your fighter each round but i don't know what i'm doing at all but i have a lot of fun getting screenshots because it's so beautiful is it like a fighting game so like you have to like yeah battle? it's very much a fighting game like okay because dreamlight valley is not it's very like you grow carrots and you pick up shells on the beach <laughs> <laughs> no, Mirrorverse is like Mortal Kombat, but with oh, Disney characters. <laughs> that's why I need to tell James he needs to download that on his phone. Maybe I can get it on my iPad. <laughs> it's such a weird game, but I do think it has great images. The only thing, much like my Disney experience, like I think when Disney does anything in app form, they think, how can we force this person to have to buy a rechargeable battery pack because we want to drain this battery so <laughs> fast. That's the truth. Hey, I still have one of those in my uh, my purse from when we were at Disneyland last year. <laughs> one of the little battery <laughs> cell things. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Yeah, it's that's funny. I have to check that one out. Um, one thing kind of cool about Dreamlight Valley, you can't play together yet. Like it's not. My husband even downloaded it because you can get it on Xbox and. It, if you've met my husband, you know, he's not really one. He played Animal Crossing with me though. Um, but he's not the huge, the huge Disney fan, but he got it because I'm playing it. One of his other friends that he games with plays it and he's been getting pretty into it, but they're going to release it for the phone too. From what I've heard, I don't know when, um, but right now it's on like Switch and Xbox and other platforms. Those are the two I officially know because that's what we have in our house. But yeah, so pretty soon, Rick, you could be farming carrots with me in Dreamlight Valley. <laughs> Unfortunately, I was going to make a joke like I'm not going to do that and make fun of your husband like I do every once in a while for being <laughs> a nerd and call you guys geeks and stuff like that. But I know I'll be doing it at some point anyway. So Dreamlight Valley, I've seen a lot about it on Twitter. And you're saying if you are interested in Disney, if you like Disney, this is definitely something you're going to want to check out. Oh, and the other great thing I forgot to say. The music in it, if you are a theme park fan, you will love it. It's like you have a radio in your house and you can change the stations and all of a sudden you'll just hear music that's like, I know this. And it's like the same kind of music you hear walking around the parks as you're playing the game and you're walking around the valley. It's like all instrumental versions of stuff, but then it also kicks in stuff that you will hear in the park. So it is so cool. <laughs> Okay, that is pretty cool. I am excited to play this game. Thank you for telling us about it, Sarah. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm happy I could share my minimal knowledge so far. <laughs> Sarah says we'll be back next week to start talking about the announcements from Disneyland in Southern California that came out of the D23 Expo earlier this month. Right now, Marissa from Chicago is joining us to finish giving her opinions of the D23 announcements for Walt Disney World. Always great to have you on the show, Marissa. Thanks for having me. Now we are going to talk about this blue sky concept. Marissa has been biting her tongue to talk about this the entire time. I think maybe we have been more negative than I wanted, but let's see if negative actually does pump up those views. So like, comment, and subscribe. We are going to talk blue sky concepts what lies beyond the pyres of Big Thunder Mountain Railroad expanding Magic Kingdom past Big Thunder? First thing, awesome idea in my humble opinion. Yeah, I think it's a fabulous idea. Honestly, I don't have 
any sort of negative opinions about the ideas specifically, we'll get into to where my concerns lie once once we've reviewed what they are. So this blue sky concept art, which could definitely, definitely change as we talked about Mary Poppins, we talked about Spaceship Earth, Reflections, the Play Pavilion. I think this is more where your concerns lie is that there's been a lot promised and not always a lot delivered. But Encanto, Coco, and a villain's land that has been teased to be going behind Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. I think that conceptually, this is a great idea. These are all properties that are very popular. People love villains. People love Encanto. People love Coco. My concerns are... More so in the fact that they're standing here essentially pitching these ideas to us in what seems like a very early brainstorming session. So you don't really want to get your hopes up or get excited for it, especially considering, you know, we, as we talked about, all these things that were previously announced as this is coming are now gone with absolutely no mention of them like they never existed in the first place. Will that go the same way? We don't know. Will, how will it change? We don't know. Will it get the budget and treatment it deserves? Also, we don't know. And my main concern with this is that they're going to take Coco and Encanto, both different cultures, both different places, and because they're so close together, we'll get kind of this homogenous mashup that doesn't really do either of the cultures the justice that they deserve or I hesitate to say it but give it the respect that it deserves I have less concerns about villains because it's villains but my main concerns are with Encanto and Coco being put in that spot in that position I remember when we were waiting for Encanto to debut and I heard people saying, why do we need another Mexican story? And I'm like, it's not Mexican, it's Colombian. I, I understand what you're saying. It would be very easy for them to lump those two stories together. I do think something is coming beyond Big Thunder Mountain Railroad because they've been working on that area, basically preparing to put something there. They've also been buying more land because they have to have a certain amount of land allocated towards natural preservation. So if you're going to get rid of a certain percent of natural preservation, you've got to buy it somewhere else. And they're doing that. So it makes me think that something is coming to Magic Kingdom. And we've talked in the past how much we want Walt Disney World to build a fifth gate. But if they're not going to build a fifth gate at least expand on your existing parks instead of destroying something and putting something new in its place. Keep expanding out. So I like that aspect of this blue sky concept. And once it happens, it might not be Coco and Encanto. They might decide to put Coco in Epcot at the Mexico Pavilion and we get a third property that we don't even know, this new movie, Wish. Maybe that's huge, and we get Wish, which really seems like it might make sense at Magic Kingdom. I do like the idea of building past Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. That is basically my one takeaway from this announcement. I think that expanding past there is such a great idea, and desperately needed because Magic Kingdom is crowded and it's going to just keep getting more crowded or stay as crowded as it is. But I also am concerned, like you said, it might not even become Encanto and Coco because 10 years from now when this is being built, something else is popular. And I think that that just is such a wasted opportunity to maybe do something like a new pavilion in Epcot or a new ride theme, something that you can get out sooner while these properties are still so popular and there's so much demand for seeing that representation in the parks instead of saying, hey, maybe five years from now we'll break ground on this. Who knows how long it's going to take to be completed, but maybe it'll be something different entirely and it won't even happen. 
you know, I would just, I would like to see them say, we're going to do something maybe on a smaller scale, but guarantee that it will happen. You know what was really naive and blue sky, me thinking that this was going to be one episode? And then the other thing from the blue sky area was, I have it labeled as, definitely not our dinos. Dino Land USA appears to be disappearing forever. The concept art looks like it is teasing Moana and Zootopia. Disney's Animal Kingdom is, Marissa doesn't have kids this is her baby like animal kingdom is the closest thing she has to children and i am trying not to be too negative but i have thoughts and i know that marissa has thoughts so why don't you start oh boy do i have thoughts about this goodness my very first thought being how do you screw up dinosaurs in the (laughs) sense that dinosaurs are so cool there is always demand for them people love them and your first thought isn't to say maybe we get rid of the dino land carnival theme and do something different with dinosaurs it would take less money it would take less time you get to keep the dinosaur ride you get to keep that really fun boneyard playground for kids and you get to keep dinosaurs which is a huge part of the animal kingdom theme you have such an important conservation focus in animal kingdom You know, dinosaurs play a key role in that, in saying that it's something, they're creatures that we used to have that are now totally gone. And part of the appeal and the intrigue about them is saying these creatures used to walk the earth, and now all we have are these skeletons and what we can try to recreate about how they lived. And if we're not careful, that can happen to all these other species and all these other places around the world. And so you really need something there to anchor that. And yes, there are other things you could do. I'm not saying, okay, the only thing they can ever do there is dinosaurs, even though I think it makes sense. But what they proposed is not the answer. It's not the answer. I'll let you talk a little bit because I certainly have more thoughts. I'm going to let everybody in on a little of the backstage pass of this podcast in particular. And I have some blue sky ideas of my own. And one of them is to start videotaping portions of us recording the podcast to use as teasers and that would have been the segment right there where marissa is just holding her forehead and staring right into the camera like why is this happening first of all this is our fault None of us went and saw The Good Dinosaur, and if we would have gone and seen the movie The Good Dinosaur, they would have rethemed this entire land to a Disney IP, and we would have gotten to keep dinosaurs. Second thought, this is waving the white flag to Velocicoaster. This is Walt Disney World saying, we got out dinosaured. We can't compete with Velocicoaster at Universal's Islands of Adventure, and we're not even going to try anymore. We're not going to put our dinosaur ride with Felissa Rashad anymore, and we are going to say, Universal, you won this particular round of theming, and that surprises the heck out of me. They didn't let Universal win the Harry Potter Star Wars fight. They went at them even harder with Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, and now we are in a position where they just said dinosaurs. One Like, Disney created Toy Story so they could sell you Mr. Potato Head at Disney prices. And to have these toys, kids don't buy cowboy toys anymore. Ah, here's what we'll do. We'll have a cowboy and he hangs out with an astronaut and then we'll have a Monopoly The entire Cars franchise is so Disney could sell IP cars. And they give up on dinosaurs? Like, they give up on dinosaurs? This is so incredible to me. I am flabbergasted by this. Now, I am going to say it is a little problematic bringing another person of color they have the Pocahontas meet and greet at Animal Kingdom and now they're saying Moana person of color Animal Kingdom I do get however how Moana 
has conservation themes. So when people were saying other IP that I don't think necessarily make as much sense, I do get it with Moana. Here's my concern with Moana. I do think that Moana has more of a conservation focus. So I get that. My concern is that the conservation focus in Moana is tied to the heart of Tafiti. That's the key. But we're getting the heart of Tafiti in Epcot. So you can't duplicate it and do two heart of Tafiti attractions. Why would you do that? So I feel like even though Moana does have that concept stored in the storyline, it's not what we're going to get in an attraction. And so I am afraid that that will then be lost. I'm sure it would look very nice. I'm sure it would be very entertaining, but it's not going to hit as hard on that message. Are you ready for some great analysis right now from me? Ditto. Like, that's exactly what I was thinking. So I know we've talked a lot about the internet and social media today, but I was particularly proud of the meme that I created where... It's the picture of Tiger Woods and John Daly on the golf course and Tiger Woods is dressed like a normal golfer and John Daly is wearing like these zebra print pants that are purple and pink and he's wearing this ridiculous shirt and I was like Animal Kingdom with its concepts of conservation and its well-themed lands that all merge together in a natural look and then John Daly is Zootopia in the back corner looking completely ridiculous i understand that zootopia has animals but this just doesn't feel like it fits at all i keep seeing people say but zootopia is a movie about animals how can it not fit and it's because it's not a movie about animals Thank you. It's a movie with anthropomorphic characters that just happen to be animated as animals to make their big message more palatable to all the people. You can't, (laughs) their message is very heavily tied into some, what some people would consider political themes. And Disney very cleverly packaged it in the form of animals and no one picked up on it. Everyone said, this is a great movie. This is a lot of fun. What a great message. Some people did pick up on it, but you'll definitely see, especially with Etsy shops not getting the point of the Judy Hopps character. And yeah. and I'm just going to leave it at that because, like I said, we don't want to get too political. But I think that's the problem with bringing this IP into Disney's Animal Kingdom like this is it does completely miss the point of the movie. I will have conversations as a baseball fan with people about what's your favorite baseball movie, and people will say Field of Dreams, and I'll say, yep, that's a great movie. It's not a baseball movie. You missed the complete and total point of that movie. That is the same thing with Zootopia. It is not a movie about animals. It is a movie about race relations, over policing it's a movie about how some people get tricked into hating people who should be more like them it is not for this theme park and i am afraid that disney is going to completely miss the point with this land yep it is a movie that solely deals with human problems animals do not exist on this level, it does not make sense to put it in an Animal Kingdom park. It also has nothing to do with conservation. So already right there, you're missing the point. And I am so concerned that Disney is going to put Zootopia in and it's just going to be, here's a cute little area with all these animal characters that you know and love and blah, 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 and it's so fun. It's going to completely eliminate the message of Zootopia, which is a problem. And at the same time, it's going to completely eliminate the point of Animal Kingdom. And it's like, how do you choose a property that's going to swing and miss on two points, including the purpose of its own movie? I'm going to use an example of a movie I don't think should be going into Disney's Animal Kingdom, but would make more sense. And I don't remember it having a single animal in it besides human beings. And that is Wally. Wally makes more sense in Animal Kingdom 
with like 99% fewer animals. <laughs> yes, it does. Then Zootopia ever will make sense there. This is not a good fit. Now, luckily, it is blue sky concept. So hopefully they hear some of these negative things and it doesn't happen. Maybe this is something that could be slowed down or stopped. They already have Judy and Nick Wilde in the Adventure Friends character Cavalcade, which I feel is missing the point. I just don't want this happening. That's all. That's all I'm going to (laughs) say. I don't either. And I think that this is where the idea of it being blue sky is like, oh, thank goodness. Because, you know, in total contrast to Magic Kingdom, where we were like, it would be nice if this happened, but I don't want to get my hopes up. I'm feeling the exact opposite about this, where I'm like, I don't want this to happen. So I'm getting my hopes up that none of it's going to come to fruition, that they're going to say, never mind, we're going to do something totally different. And I think if they need, if they feel like they absolutely need to put a movie in there, I would say Raya and the Last Dragon is a good one to put because you get these characters that, you know, the movie does focus more on how humans interact with the world and how our actions can have impacts beyond just human civilization. And then you kind of get this beastly kingdom idea that Animal Kingdom has been tossing around for years and years with the concept of imaginary creatures and how, you know, we interact with the thought of what could be in the animal world. In some of the signs on some of the benches around Animal Kingdom, you'll still see that dragon that was part of the original concept for Animal Kingdom that was going to be part of Beastly Kingdom. But there are two thoughts that I have about Raya and the Last Dragon. I think they're holding Raya in their back pocket for if these Avatar movies bomb, they are going to retheme Pandora, the world of Avatar. I honestly think that is something they are thinking. But what I don't understand is if you're going to tear Dino Land down immediately and start building something and you could get your Raya and the Last Dragon Land out before Epic Universe opens their How to Train Your Dragon Land, that would be a big deal. You would beat Universal to the punch on that. And if you did it well, which may be what scares them that they wouldn't do it well, but if you did it well, you could raise the bar. You could have that volley going to Universal before Epic Universe opens. But that's not what we got. Yeah, it's definitely a disappointing outlook to see how they envision the future of Animal Kingdom. You know, regardless, it's going to still be a great park. Things that make it great are still going to be there. But as someone who does love Animal Kingdom, it is disappointing to see that maybe in the future, this synergy between all the existing lands isn't something that they'll consider when building new ones. And I'm going to leave this conversation with a quote from Josh DeMauro that I think completely and totally missed the mark. Bob Chapik is the CEO, if you're wondering, and Josh DeMauro is in charge of parks and merchandising and things like that. If you don't know who he is, you're not necessarily in our little clique where he's basically a huge celebrity, but... I understand not everybody knows the name Josh Demaro, but he had a quote that just so missed the mark that it makes me wonder sometimes what they're seeing. And it is, we are never going to stop delighting you. And I love these theme parks and we are not usually as negative as we have been talking about this. And we weren't even really setting out to be negative because I am excited about a lot of this stuff. But they have missed the mark so many times that I don't think they realize how many times they have not delighted us. Yeah, it's definitely very interesting. And I think that they could have had a much different reception to their announcements if they had taken the the route of saying, we're going to announce less, but we're going to announce guaranteed. To maybe not focus so much on... What could be that, you know, two years from now, we're going to be going, what happened to this? And instead say, you know, here's what will happen, even if it's 
not as potentially exciting as all these blue sky ideas. I, it's just so interesting to see kind of this unanimous reaction of, okay, but now what? And then to have the execs going, we're delighting you and it's never going to end. It's just very tonally different. Marissa, you are on vacation right now, and I can't express how grateful I am that you spent this much time talking about this because I do think that there was a lot to discuss, but the fact that you are talking about it at Animal Kingdom Lodge with us just really shows that you are a great person and you love talking about Disney, and thank you so much for being here. Well, thanks for letting me come on and talk about this. Um, We certainly had a lot of thoughts, so I really appreciate you letting me get them out. We have a lot planned for the next few weeks and months, of course. Please continue to donate to the fundraiser for CASA of Pinellas County, Florida at casapinellas.org slash walkwithrick slash. This Saturday, October 1st, is Epcot's 40th birthday and the 51st birthday of Walt Disney World. To celebrate, I have a Park Pass reservation for Epcot, and I think some of our favorite friends of the show will be there as well. You can definitely expect a vlog on the Tall Guy Talks Travel with Rick Dockerty YouTube channel. Make sure you are subscribed. Next Thursday, Sarah Says and I will go over the announcements from Disneyland Resort in Southern California that came out of the D23 Expo. There are some big things, everything from a Baby Yoda meet and greet to an Avengers Campus e-ticket attraction to a Big Hero 6 land. That will be on episode 88 of Tall Guy Talks Travel with Rick Doherty. Until then, have a great week.